Hi everyone, I'm Catherine and welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I'm coming to you right in my sewing room, a little more casual today because I thought it would be fun to make a DIY dress form draping video. Sorry, I, we have a visitor for the video. So if you hear anyone, that's little Edward because I know a lot of you really liked my DIY dress form video. It's a pretty popular concept of making your own dress form. And I think the biggest thing that draws people to it is the ability to drape your own pattern. Because of course, when you have a dress form that's shaped exactly like your body, that's the biggest potential is being able to drape your own pattern. But yeah, so I'm going to be draping a pattern for pretty much the first time. It's not technically my first time because I did drape the pattern for my swim dress, my 18th century swim dress, but that wasn't exactly the same situation because I was using stretch fabric. This time I'm going to be doing the traditional draping where we use non-stretch fabric. I'm using a big bunch of cotton muslin that I already had on hand, and I'm going to be draping an 18th century bodice for a jacket. So let's just jump into the video. Okay, everybody, so here's my dress form, my DIY dress form, and I just wanted to show you that since I'm draping an 18th century bodice, I have a pair of 18th century stays on the dress form. And if you are planning on draping anything historical that is going to be worn over a corset or anything that you want to give a corset-like shape to the body, then you're gonna want to put the appropriate undergarments on your dress form. And as I mentioned, I'm using some cotton muslin. I have quite a bit. This is just one piece that I already cut off. I'm kind of hoping I'll be able to drape the whole pattern for over half of the dress form's body with this, but we'll see. I also have my handy wrist pin cushion, a pair of fabric scissors, and a pencil. So let's just begin. And again, big disclaimer here, I have never done this before. and. I am going to be learning in this process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the center front and I'm going to just leave a little extra because this cut edge isn't straight and I'll just draw a line where the center front is and I'll cut that later. So I'm just going to stick a bunch of pins in this lady right along the center front and the main thing is I want to keep the grain line of the fabric going straight down her body. And I'm going to pin right over her very handy center front seam that she has over her body. That's another good thing about these DIY dress forms. Probably most dress forms have this. They have the seams that you can use as guides. Ooh, I'm kind of having some trouble sticking this into the stays because there's a zipper. So I'm just going to stick it right next to it. There we go. And I'll just stick some pins in, where am I gonna do this? I guess up to the shoulder. So for now, I'm just going to be using her shoulder seam as a guide for where the shoulder seam of the jacket is going to be, but afterwards I might change that because 18th century jackets usually have the front shoulder seam. They have the front going a bit more over the shoulder. Okay. Now what am I going to do? So the interesting thing about 18th century jackets is that they're basically one of the only historical women's garments that did not have any darts. Oh, I just bent a pin. That did not have any darts or princess seams or anything like that. They're just pulled over the body into this conical shape. So right now I'm just kind of trying to pull out the gapiosis that we have around this area. So I guess the first thing I'll do is draw on a neckline, which of course I might change afterwards. So 18th century bodice necklines were quite low. I'll make mine higher than they were because I want to be able to wear this day to day in my wardrobe. So like an 18th century jacket neckline would literally be right at pretty much where the stays are. I'll make it keep it there for now. Okay, so a big issue I'm having right now is my pins are all getting pulled out. So I'm just drawing on the center front seam. 
and I am planning on having a center front closure in this jacket. It will have a hook and eye placket, I think. So I'm just going to start pulling out the excess and pinning around the armhole. And while I'm doing this, I'm just going to talk to you a bit about my plans for the sleeve. Obviously, my dress form does not have arms. If you are so inclined, the Bootstrap Fashions brand does have a pattern for a dress form that does have arms, so that's an interesting option, but most people, most people's dress forms don't have arms. So basically, I'm going to use a sleeve an 18th century jacket sleeve pattern that I already have and I might alter it a bit and I might alter this armhole a bit just to make sure that they fit each other. Okay, so I'm kind of seeing now that it's probably a better idea to actually drape the waist before I finalize the armhole. And then I can draw up the excess up here, I guess. Okay, so I think I'm going to try to drape around tightly around the waist area because I've got to make sure that this is going to work without any darts. So I'm going to get the waist area pinned in place first and then whatever pulling there is, I guess I'll just pull it up here. I don't know. Or maybe I should be pulling kind of from both areas at the same time. That's a good idea. I'm going to take out these armhole pins and redo it. Oh goodness. Now my center front seat pins are all coming out. This is a problem. I think I need better pins. Bigger pins maybe. Quilting pins. I do have some, I just don't know where they are at the moment. I must say, draping that stretchy 18th century bodice was much easier than this, but I probably just don't know what I'm doing. And that's likely the issue. So I guess I shouldn't try to pull from both sides at once since we saw what just happened. I'm feeling some progress. I guess I need to have the pins going down further to make sure that this center front is staying straight because if you look at most patterns, including 18th century patterns for bodices, they almost always will have the center front, usually the center back on the straight of grain and everything else revolves around that fact. So let's get pulling. Now the good thing is, is that these wrinkles down here, we anything that's below the line that the bodice is going to follow up the waist we don't have to worry about because of course it's just going to be cut off from here now i have been debating a bit about how i would drape one of those peplums that you often see on 18th century jackets i'm not sure if it's the best idea to try to drape that i mean i'm sure it's possible to drape one of those and i'm sure there's plenty of people who know how to do it I just don't know if it's something that's practical for me to try right now or if I should just use the peplum from my 18th century jacket pattern that I already have and just kind of alter it to fit on this bodice. That is something to think about. Well, I'm seeing some wrinkling, so I'm going to try to pull it down. This is fairly relaxing. And I can see that draping is something that would get easier with practice. Again, this is my very first time draping a woven pattern. Things are getting better. Things are getting better. So that's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm just going to follow the line of the waist and pin as I go around the waist and around the body and try to pull out the wrinkles as I go. You know, this kind of reminds me of shoemaking, of lasting the shoes. And I'm hoping that means that as in lasting, 
I'll be able to go back later and refine this and get more of the wrinkles out after I've kind of gotten the basics pinned. Because I'm seeing wrinkling here, but I can, I imagine I'll be able to pull that out in a moment. This is really a lot like lasting. Wow. I'm running out of pins though. Great. Well, now what I have to do is I have to figure out where this panel is going to end. So 18th century bodices, they wouldn't have the side seam going up the side of the body. They would take it over to about here on the body. So that's what I'm going to do. And I guess I should finish pinning the armhole all the way around. And I'm completely out of pins. So I guess I have to go find more pins. Okay guys, so I was feeling really excited about how it was going until I looked at the front and saw that all my center front pins had pulled out. So we're gonna redo this. I'm starting to have a feeling that by the time this is done, I will have ruined innumerable pins. And also I'm starting to get mad respect for anyone who drapes patterns. I've watched it couple videos. I've watched Isabella from Prior Attire draping a Victorian bodice and she just makes it look so easy and I'm starting to get mad respect points here now that I'm actually trying it. Mind you, I almost wish I could put a dart in this thing. <laughs> it would be so much easier if it could have darts like almost every other type of bodice in the world, in the history of the world, except for the 18th century. But I guess the stays kind of help with that because they give the body this conical shape. So it is easier to have a darless bodice. Now 18th century armholes were very small and they were a little more off shoulder and that was how they could be so tight. So I'm just pinning like right around this armhole and I will cross reference this armhole later with an 18th century pattern I already have just to see because I know that armhole already fits me. Okay. I don't know what to do with all this. If only I could just have a dart here. If only. Yeah, so just in case you can't see my problem, look at all this wrinkling and I don't know what to do with it. It just wants to be put into a dart and I can't because this is 18th century. What on earth were they thinking? I don't know. Maybe if I like pull it all up into the armhole area, that's what I will do. So right now I'll just, I guess, focus on, well, I guess I'll just pull it up into the armhole now. May as well, right? Let me turn a little bit. Because once I get the armhole figured out, then I can figure out this side seam. Maybe I should just start pinning closer to where my neckline is going to be. I don't really need to worry about this stuff up here, right? And then I can pull some of this gaffiosis out. Some progress here. I don't know if you can see that. Progress is being made. Okay, I'm getting close to the first, to the front piece being done. Pencil. Sort of drawn on where I think the shoulder seam will be. So it'll be about here. About. And then I'm just kind of pulling all the wrinkles into the armhole because obviously that won't be here. So I've got all these pens around the armhole. So I'll just go ahead and draw on the armhole. Okay, so I thought I'd start now trying to work on turning this into a back seam. So I basically just like pinned out the area between where the front shoulder seam will meet the back shoulder seam. I think. And so basically what I'm doing as I'm pulling out this dart of fabric between the front panel and the back panel is I'm also drawing up this fabric 
into an orientation where the straight of grain is running parallel with the back, the center back line. It's working. So I don't know if you can see this, but this dart of fabric that I'm pulling out is starting to take the shape of an 18th century seam. It's curving into the armhole. Yay! This is getting to be rewarding. And so you can see that this is starting to bunch up more of the shoulder seam. So I'm just gonna get basically more fabric into that dart. And I just want you to see this, like as I pull up on this dart of fabric back here, it's pulling out the wrinkles up from here. It's so fun. Oh my gosh, this is really fun. So I guess what I'll do now is I'll start pinning it at the back and that will kind of draw all this up to be as tight and to be sitting where it's supposed to be. I'm also starting to wonder if there's like special pins people use for draping. I don't know, probably not. I am bending a lot of my nice silk pins though. It's really exciting though. It's starting to come together. So it's quite close to where it needs to be. It just needs to obviously be, I need to be refining all this floppy fabric up here into this shoulder seam and refine this dart area. Okay, so I'm just pulling more fabric into this dart here and therefore pulling out more of the wrinkles from the front. It's definitely not perfect still, but it's better. Starting to get an idea for how I could also drape a peplum at the same time. First of all, I want to find the point where the back, the center, the center back bodice will end. Okay, so I'm just going to be finishing off this drape by drawing very carefully on the outlines of everything, like the neckline, the armhole, and drawing right where these pins are on either side to get the edge of each pattern piece, and then I'll be taking it all off, and I'm super excited! Okay, so I have my newly draped pattern on the cutting table now, and I'm just going to finalize it and neaten it up a little bit. Look, it has that 18th century swooping shoulder line. I'm so happy. So basically what I'm going to be doing after I neat up, neaten up these pieces and cut them apart is I'm going to cut them apart leaving enough seam allowance in order to sew a mock-up so I'll just cut out matching pieces for the other half and then make a mock-up whenever I'm ready to make an actual 18th century jacket which could be in my next video.
So here's the back piece all finished. And I'm super excited because it looks like an actual 18th century bodice. This armhole definitely has that 18th century look. And here's the front piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and label these just as I would with a paper pattern. And I'm just going to mark the areas where I wasn't able to get enough fabric for the seam allowance, such as the armhole here. Just so when I'm sewing it or cutting out like the final version of this, then I'll know. Okay guys, thanks so much for joining me on my little draping adventure for my very first time. I definitely recommend draping, especially for historical bodices. If you're wondering, it definitely was challenging in the beginning, but at the end of it, it came together pretty quickly once my fingers got the hang of what I was supposed to be doing. And when I compare it to the extreme hassle involved in manually scaling up something like a Janet Arnold pattern, and then having to make the adjustments necessary to fit it to your body, this was definitely a lot easier. So if you're thinking of making a DIY dress form or you already have one, this is definitely a great thing to try. And I highly recommend it. If you enjoyed it, please give this video a like. It helps this kind of content get out to more people who are interested. Also leave your comments and questions below and check out my blog, which will be linked in the description as well as all my social media accounts. Okay guys, I'll see you on the next video. Bye.